Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, should the Vol Ages Hot with Shono here, about to give you another Injustice 2 video. Now, in the previous video before the Justice League Flash 4 star promotion video, we talked about some good characters used on Brainiac. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about characters you should not be using with Brainiac at all. Do not even focus on these characters for raids. And the first one on that list is Enrage Bane. Now, as you guys know, when hit by opponent abilities, Bane becomes unblockable for 6 seconds. And he just doesn't really have anything that actually complements him. Yes, I could probably get his damage up and he could do decently. But I don't find Enrage Bane to bring anything to the table. You need characters that will bring things to the table. Now, another character that I don't recommend focusing on is Primal Swamp Thing. And the reason for that, he's a super slow attacker. And he is a tanky card. However, he does nothing in the form of offense. And it, when it comes to the raid bosses, you want offensive-minded characters. Primal Swamp Thing is not one of them. Sub-Zero's Clone Toss does not work. And his specials do horrible damage. I believe freezing opponents... Might work, it might not, but even still, Sub-Zero is a garbage character. You do not want to use him in raid bosses. Uh, Flora Poison Ivy in this game mode is actually one that I do not recommend. Because she just doesn't do enough damage. Yes, the Vine Drill is amazing in Arena. This is an A-tier Arena card. But when it comes to actually dealing with other sources, I think that Flora Poison Ivy falls a little bit flat. I don't think you should focus on her in the raids. She's a great arena character. Don't focus on her in raids. And as far as silver green arrow goes, if you do not have ace green arrow or if you do not have uh, multiverse green arrow, then you'll probably want to do that. Now keep in mind this passive I don't think works on white canary. I have not tested it yet, but this passive specifies black canary. Is that going to really change the card? No. I think this green arrow sucks. You should use the other options. Horrific Scarecrow makes abilities specials cost more. Great for phases 1 to 3. Horrible in phase 4. I definitely think you should focus on him. Speed Force the Flash does generate fast attack chance. So really solid, especially if you're using Robin. So I would not write out Speed Force the Flash. Silver Wonder Woman, however, is not a character you should be focusing on. While I think Wonder Womans are great in the arena... Because of the blocking abilities, they're also great in the campaign. I think Wonder Woman is one of those characters that fall short in the raid format. Gorilla Grodd definitely falls short in the raid format. As far as Silver Joker goes, I don't think he brings enough to the table. You can't stun raid bosses at all. So I think the Joker is pretty bad. Superman is also really bad because he is a defensive character and he has no real offensive abilities. And countless times a special 3 just gets jumped over. Uh, Marksman Deadshot, however, could probably do some decent damage. I don't recommend focusing on him as he brings nothing to the table. If you want to focus on a Deadshot, you probably should do the Silver as it gives you a little bit of crit chance for the entire team. Armored Superman, if you're not using Armored Superman with Dark Supergirl, you have no reason to use him. There's better options out there. Multiverse Supergirl is an interesting one because it does reduce the amount of damage you take when you're at low health. But in my opinion, you should be using Dr. Fate or Power Girl instead. You have to have Multiverse Green Arrow. Soul Stealer Dr. Fate is also a card that I really don't recommend using because Dr. Fates are generally low in damage. You can use the Hazard Special 2 for healing, but beyond that, there's no reason to use Soul Stealer Dr. Fate. Obviously, if you have him level up, he'll probably be okay. Uh, Telekinetic Gorilla Grad Garbage Character, you should not focus on him at all. Master Thief Catwoman, I haven't really tested out the Bleed or the Hazards, but generally this is another character you probably want to avoid. But if the Caltrops do really good, assuming you have somebody pinned in the corner with Arkham Knight Batman, my opinion might change. I don't have Master Thief Catwoman leveled up enough. We know the Claw Dot does do some decent damage. And any character can be used with Multiverse the Flash to increase the crit damage, so keep that in mind. However, Jon Stewart Green Lantern does that as well. Silver Flash, however, is a bad character and one that you should definitely avoid. There's no reason to use it. Harley Quinn, the only benefit to her is that she gives 10% attack. But unless you have her as a team synergy, there's no reason to use her. Unhinged Harley Quinn is another useless character. I'm pretty sure you can't steal the clones at the beginning of Stage 4. So, Unhinged Harley Quinn, a garbage character. Cyborg generally is a bad character, but remember he does have a power drain. And he can regenerate health while tagged out. So I think that in this format, he's not entirely useless because you can use him to soak up hits 
while you're generating power for your other teammates, use him with a defensive character like, for example, at Landing Armor Aquaman, and you can double down on power drains. I think you can use him with the Landing Armor Aquaman and be okay. Use Cyborg to take the hits, have Aquaman throw down the power drains and get out, and I think you'd be okay. Silver Catwoman suffers from the same problems as Master Thief Catwoman. I don't think that she's really good in raids. Entangling Poison Ivy does reduce power generation. Power generation dampening is really good in Phase 4 of Brainiac. So while Entangling Poison Ivy seems like a bad card on paper, if you can slow down how much they generate power, and it's the same thing with Captain Cold, it might actually save you through the four phases. So I'm not going to write off Entangling Poison Ivy completely. I am writing off Flora Poison Ivy, but I think there is some use for her. Now for Ace Green Arrow, he does have that power drain. And on tag out, Green Arrow fires an electrical smoke arrow that power locks an opponent for five seconds. This ability is actually amazing against Stage 4 of Brainiac. Because as we know, a lot of characters except for Multiverse Green Arrow or any Multiverse characters have a four second tag in. So if you're running characters like Atlantic Armor Aquaman, you can power lock with Ace Green Arrow. If you're running Dr. Fate, you can probably get off two power drains with Aquaman and then tag back into Ace Green Arrow and possibly fire an electric arrow with him. So Ace Green Arrow is definitely usable and I think there's another character that has power lock. So those effects aren't that bad. Last Laugh the Joker, Swamp Thing, totally useless, do not use those cards. Last Laugh the Joker can be really good in Campaign, coupled with Sub-Zero and Dr. Fate, so Campaign and Arena, you can definitely use Last Laugh the Joker, don't focus on him in Raids. Bane, generally, I would write off as a useless character, however, there is some weird synergy with Silver Harley Quinn as well as Justice League Cyborg. So you can actually get extra damage out of that. So I'm not going to write off Bane completely because if you're using Justice League Cyborg and, for example, Mythic Wonder Woman, Justice League Batman, BVS Superman, Bane could actually work as a support character. So I'm not going to write him off. Energize Starfire is not a real high damage card, but she can take hits like no other. So in like the one minute phase in stages one, two, and three, Energize Starfire is just not going to die. Black Canary, on the other hand, is a card you should not focus on, and Deadshot, like we talked about, does give the team 10% critical attack chance, but Silver Batman gives 20%. So unless you're using Deadshot for a team support boost, do not even work on Deadshot at all. Warrior Queen Wonder Woman, however, is a weird card, and while she is really good in Arena and Campaign, I think that this Wonder Woman is really bad to use in raids, I wouldn't even focus on her. Cyborg. Unbreakable Cyborg. Also, the stun chance does not work. The EMP is a hard hazard to use. And Total Meltdown does do okay damage. But generally, you're not going to be using Gold Cyborg. And Silver Cyborg is probably yet less useful. Hellboy, on the other hand, for Phase 3 is amazing. Because on the dot damage hazard, it should actually heal you. So if you stay on the left side of the screen... You're going to be able to do decent damage to Brainiac and also heal up as well. Sonic Black Canary and Un Suicide Squad Harley Quinn. Sorry, Mikey's Box. Absolutely garbage. Now, you can use uh, Harley Quinn Synergy. She does have a power drain on her box, but it's a 1 in 3 chance. It's not really reliable, and the opponent has to be stupid to walk into it unless you have them pinned in the corner. So... Unless the power drain is like six bars and you're running a Dr. Fate with double Harley Quinn, it's not going to work. Amazon Wonder Woman and Aquaman are garbage characters. And yes, he does have the power drain power of Neptune, but generally Aquaman is not a good character in general. So I would just use it landing armor if you have him. Uh, Justice League the Flash does give fast attack chance. Fast attack chance translates into more damage as you get an extra hit. So if you're running an all-flash team, you could just primary Justice League the Flash, and you're going to get a lot of combo. It's just like Blade Master Robin and Silver Robin. They are huge combo generators, and don't overlook them, because the higher your combo is, the more damage you do. So Justice League the Flash, even by himself, I think is pretty good. You probably want to run Cyborg and Speed Force the Flash, but I could definitely see it working. Basically, the ones I mentioned are pretty bad. I can leave a whole list in the description of cards you should not be using. But that's basically it. So, what is the key to actually winning in Brainiac? 
Phase 1 and 2, you just need a lot of damage. In Phase 3, John Stewart Green Lantern, Hellboy, or basically just stay in the middle where possible. It's pretty hard to do. Horrific Scarecrow is great for Phase 3 as well. Just because that if you're doing like Raid 1 or 2, by the time you get to 3, you're going to be at the 1 minute mark and you need a special to cost more. Phase 4, there is no better character than Multiverse Green Arrow in my opinion. But you still need supplementary effects like Dark, or Dr. Fate and Power Girl to actually make it work better. But you could also use secondary effects like Captain Cold and Entangling Poison Ivy to actually reduce how much power generation comes in. And... Don't underestimate these effects. Anything that dampens power is actually really good against Brainiac because you need that power dampening. If you're spamming Frostfield, basically infinite with Dr. Fate, there's no chance that you're going to have a problem with them. And this is why Captain Cold is a great option because when you have extra power, you can just throw walls down and then a Frostfield. You can even have a rotation on that in the two-minute mark where you just use Frostfield, wall, fr wall, Frostfield, and then you can run Ace Green Arrow to Power Drain or something like that. So if you like this video talking about cards I do not recommend using in raids against Brainiac, please give this video a like rating, comment, subscribe, share this video amongst your friends, and as a favorite, check out my other Injustice 2 videos playlist, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, which are all Hollywood Channel, and have a wonderful day, kids. www.youtube.com slash Hollywood Show now. Subscribe, bitches! Thank <laughs> you.